Uh, so today we're going to basically go to the deepest levels of Gem5 and try to develop from there. Um, before we do anything, um, I, well, I recently pushed something to the main branch on your like, repository. So let's go ahead and do everything we did like at 9 AM again. So what we're going to do is run git stash and then git po let's just do git fetch in case uh, uh, something else is also there. So and then git pull origin main. And now like your repository should be up to date with the remote. And then you can do git stash pop. And hopefully, there wouldn't be anything. Yes, any conflicts or anything. So I'm going to wait a little bit for everyone to figure that out. Please let people in the room know if you're running into an issue. So again, the order of the commands were, uh, how do you create a new tab? Ah. Git stash, git fetch, git pull origin main, git stash pop. And I'm going to make this bigger. Oh, not this way. Increase font size. Doesn't increase the font size. Hopefully, everyone can see that. Um, while you guys are doing that, I want to like make a few disclaimers here. Uh, so the objective of this is for you all to get familiar with uh, a lot of things in Gem5. So it's mostly focused on breadth, not a lot of depth. And as Jason men mentioned, it's um, not necessarily the most. Like At the end, we're going to uh, try to write a sim object that kind of resembles a real hardware. Uh, so that, but like getting the most precise model of a hardware is not necessarily the primary objective. It's more like a best effort. And like you can, um, and the other side of this thing is that like I'm going to pitch my method of how you would do it. Like there's no one way to do it. I think JSON models has some objects completely different to what, how I do it. So and. Another objective is for you to like learn about my method, question it, go out, like go home, try to make it better, try to say, oh, that this like whatever he's doing is wrong. This is better. All those things. Um, you'll see that there's a lot of not necessarily hardware related stuff like the C++ standard library that we use here. I strongly encourage you to try to use the C++ standard library because it. Like the people who developed it probably write better code than the average developer. I'm assuming everyone here is an average developer. Um, the other thing is, I want to strongly encourage you to write organized code at least for yourself. So what I've realized during my research is that, like, I write a some object, then, like, I talk to Jason. Jason says, "Oh, can we measure this thing?" And I'm like, "Oh no!" Like, I have to completely. Uh, redesign the same object just because I want to measure this another thing or like add this process. So uh, while you're you know developing your sim objects, think about like future a little bit, and it's a skill that you like are not born with or like cannot be taught. It's something that you gain with experience. So do more. Um, uh, the other disclaimer is that English is not my first language, so I will use definition, declaration, scope very loosely. So these are terms that have some meaning. If it is confusing to you, sorry, it's confusing to me. So yeah, uh, bear with me through all of that. Uh, the other thing that I want to uh, mention is that uh, like throughout this tutorial, you'll see a lot of things that you have to kind of trust me that they will work. And we will see in the future how it is that they will work. Uh, did I forget anything else? One other thing about like writing good code for yourself, like there's this extension on VS Code called the To-Do Highlighter. I strongly encourage you to use that. Like leave a note for yourself, structure your notes to yourself in the future. Uh, you will really, really, really appreciate yourself. Um, yes. Okay. Let's get started. Uh, okay. Uh, here. Okay. Next. Um, OK. So 
you all have already done that probably and successfully compiled Gem5. But if you were to compile Gem5, this is one of the possible permutations of a command that you can use to com uh, compile Gem5. And we will see why like, there are many ways to compile Gem5. So I think. OK, cool. Uh, so Jason can correct me, but I think Gem5 Gem has like three domain-specific languages, one of which is for compiling Gem5. Uh, so a lot of the code that gets compiled is not already there, like when you open up the source or the Gem5 repository. So this requires a little bit of like configuration of the compilation process, like the ISA and the coherency protocol have to be specified. So Gem5 has its own build system. Um, so what you can do is go ahead like in the Gem5 directory and run scons minus minus help um, and see what you can do to configure scons and like how to tell scons like what Gem5 binary to produce for you. Like if you want the x86 ISA and like the chi cache coherency protocol, uh, what type of like compiler optimizations you want done on your binary, uh, all those things. Um, so there are three possible optimization levels, like debug, fast, and opt. Uh, today we're going to use opt. So fast has all the optimization, no debugging system. So when you develop Gem5, you will put like debug prints for yourself, not necessarily for like the user that will use your sim object. Uh, Fast doesn't have them. Fast completely ignores them. Uh, debug is like the minimal level of optimization, I guess minus 01, and has all the debug. So if you want to debug your code for some object, you can use debug. OPT will also sometimes work. And OPT has like better simulation performance. But when you're in the development phase, what I will do is like I will compile debug first and then jump to fast. Never compile OPT. This is what I do. You can say, well, that's not what I want to do, and I can get away with OPT all the time. Um, OK, so there are some defaults in the Gem5 directory. If you go to Gem5 slash build, sorry, slash build ops, you see some of them. So, uh, and you can also use this tool that we have, kconfig, uh, to configure build ops. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the build ops. So if we go to gem5, build opt, and arm, you'll see that so you're telling gem5 to build the ISA. So you can tell gem5 to not build the ISA. So no ISA at all. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to build null, which has no ISA. So you cannot use any processor model. And we don't use processor models for our, for our uh, Testing, like you can totally compile the same object that we built with any ISA. It's just that we decided to do null because null is a relatively smaller binary and it's faster to compile. And we will instead use traffic generators. Uh, then, like it's building the ARM ISA and it's also building Ruby caches. So you can also tell the, comp the, the build system to not at all build Ruby caches. So it will not like take any sl slick code and wouldn't create any Ruby cache coherency. And since we're telling it to compile Ruby, we're also telling it to compile the chai protocol. Uh, Jason can correct me, but I think within the cache coherency protocols, you can only have one of them enabled. You cannot compile two. Like for every build opt, not for every binary that you create, the cache coherency should be unique. unique. So you cannot have messy two level and chai compile at the same time. It's uh, like Jason can tell you why, not right now, because we don't have time. <laughs> so these are all the build dots. Um, and you can see a lot of them. So like there's Vega x86, which has like the GPU model built into it, like the cache coherency required for a GPU CPU connection. I think it's modeling like an AMD APU. Uh, yeah, and you can look more into it. Um, so if you want to use kconfig, uh, you can basically run a command like that, scons, def config, and then you give a build directory. So you want to compile it in build my gem5, and you want to start from build ops all. So what this command means you're telling is that you're telling scons, 
hey, I want to define a build config. I want that configuration to be stored in that directory, build slash my jump5. And I want to start off like a template kind of thing from build dots all. So like all the options in build dots all are enabled. Like it's an exact copy of it. And then you can get to modify it. So it has a GUI. Like you can go ahead like and change stuff uh, with it. So let's see. You can, the GUI, you can start with menu config, uh, the command above. And you can start like going through the possible options that you have. So as you can see, like for this configuration, all the ISAs are enabled. Um, and these are some options that you can enable or disable uh, according to your needs. So let's just quickly watch this. I'm not going to say anything again. Uh, well, any, for now. <laughs> uh, oh, something cool about Slick is that you can have HTML output of your cache coherency protocol, uh, where you can see like tables, like the ones that you see on the primary on cache coherency, I think. Is, I think those tables are taken out of Gem5. Jason can correct me. Um, OK. And off to the next slide. OK. So now, if you were to run all of those commands, a configuration for, the, for building Gem5 would have been created, and then you, can, you could have run this. So the reason why the prior command that we used, the build slash null slash gem5.opt works is that there's a build option in build opts that already has the name null. So you can go ahead and check that out. Actually, let's go ahead and check that out together. So null is here. So as you can see, the only uh, thing that is specified is like build Ruby and also build the MI example protocol. OK, any questions so far? Great. Uh, let's get into some objects. So uh, some objects are basically like models of real world phenomena. Uh, I mean, in the context of computer architecture, we use some objects to simulate computer hardware. Um, I want you all to start differentiating between uh, a few things. So a sim object is a model that is parameterizable. So like a cache is a model. So the, the, the functionality of a cache is what you describe as a sim object. Gem5 allows you to parameterize that functionality. So like your cache size is a parameter of your cache, but like the sim object that you develop uh, is the functionality. It's like the process of caching things. And it also allows you to gather statistics. So all the stats, uh, well, not all the stats, most of the stats that you see in stats.txt come from sim objects. So the, the sim objects are the things that gather statistics throughout your simulation. So for example, for a cache, it'll, it is number of hits, number of accesses, all those things. OK, so a sim object uh, in the Gem5 code base uh, has four files that represent its, uh, uh, that sim object. So there's a Python-ish script that describes the sim object at the Python level. So you've seen that we use Python-like language to create a configuration of computer systems that we simulate. Uh, you describe parameters. You, you, you describe the uh, interface at, of the sim object at the highest level. Um, one thing that I want to caution, I know we haven't gotten into the details of this yet. Uh, in the, that Python-ish script, which we'll call the sim object declaration file, Please, please try your best to never specify defaults for parameters. I think Jason opened up a CPU model yesterday, and there were like some questionable param like values that were set as the default value for your parameters. Like this is one of the good practices that you can do for yourself. Like if you default things, you'll forget about it, and then like it is very difficult to manage your experiments. And then there are two C++ files, like a header file and a source file for your sim object, where you do most of the programming. Um, there's not that much that you can do in Python when you're describing a sim object. And then there's this auto-generated file that is generated actually off of the Python script uh, that holds a bunch of parameters that is passed to uh, the other two C++ file uh, that you use to describe your sim object. So 
so far, are there any questions about this? So four files, right? One of them is auto-generated. We don't see it until Gem 5 is compiled. The other three we will develop. And then we will see the auto-generated one after we compile. OK, so in, the, um, in this step, we will write a sim object called the hello sim object. It doesn't simulate any hardware. <laughs> it's just a toy. Uh, it'll say hello, and then simulation finishes. But like, you'll see that the process of doing that is fairly complicated. Uh, we will add a parameter to it to say hello multiple times. We will use this to get familiar with some of the concepts or the steps in the process of simulation in Gem 5. OK. So let's start building our first sim object. So what we want to do is create a structure for holding our, all, all of our files. Um, because we don't want to interfere with anything else. And we want, again, organization in our code. So what I want you all to do is under gem5 source, create a directory called bootcamp. So new folder, bootcamp. And if we go back to the slides, if you follow these instructions or these commands, this is the structure that I'm going to use uh, for describing my sim object. So, oh, sorry. No, no, not this one. This one. OK. In bootcamp, I'm going to create a new directory called hello sim object. Hopefully, this is how I spelled it there. I can confirm yes. And then here, we're going to start by describing our sim object at the Python level. So. We're going to start with the Python declaration file. Let's name it hello simobject.py. The name doesn't have to be like Gem5 doesn't require you to have the same name as the sim object there, but it is good practice to have the same name as the sim object for the name of that file. Again, you owe yourself this, not the compiler, or uh, this is not a rule, basically. Um, so let's switch off to using VS Code for this. OK, so OK, so we've been talking about sim object, sim object, sim object. So let's actually start defining it. So what I will do is I will type all of these into my Python file. So let's copy and paste into Python. Hopefully, yes. And So, okay. So let's take a deeper look at what these lines mean. Um, again, like when you're writing a lot of these files, you have to be forward-looking. Like you have to have kind of a structure for all the files when you're writing this. Uh, but we'll soon get to that step. So this is not one of the biggest uh, leaps of faith today. Um, so what we're basically doing is we're Im importing the definition of the sim object at the Python level. So we, like, that is where like, the sim object class, which is in itself is a sim object, is defined. So we need to import that um, so that we can inherit from it. Because hello sim object is a sim object, and it has to inherit from sim object. Then there are three, three keywords that you have to specify. Type, which is a string. I don't exactly know what this means. Like, there's, like the process of like, parsing all these keywords is very convoluted. But I want you to take this and trust me that you want to name, uh, give the same value 
to type as the name of your sim object. So just copy and paste the name of your sim object in strings and let it be type. The next uh, keyword is the CXX header. Uh, that's where you specify the path to the header file in C++ that describes your sim object. So you might notice that this is not an absolute path. It is a relative path to the source directory. So if you, note, if you remember, we created a directory called bootcamp. Underneath it, there was hello sim object. And then inside of it, we're going to go ahead and create hello sim object.hh. So don't do it just yet. We'll get to that. Then there's CXX class, which is the name of the C++ class that represents your sim object. So again, this is a little bit future looking. I know it because I've done it before. So the name of your class will be gem5 colon colon hello sim object. Basically, everything in, well, most of the things in gem5 are under the namespace gem5. So that's why hello sim object is gem5 colon colon sim object. Hello sim object. Any questions so far? Great. So now let's go ahead uh, and see what we have. OK, so we, we did this again. Um, you don't want to play with the type. So just copy and paste the name of your sum object into the type variable. Uh, and we'll see uh, where that, uh, like the, auto, the auto generated structure that is used to pass the parameters from Python to uh, C comes from when we compile Gem5. So bear with me with this. OK, so now let's go ahead and create a new file called. So can anybody guess what the name of the file should be? It's hello underscore sim underscore object dot hh. Good. OK. So now we have created the header file, but it's empty, so we have to populate it. Let's go back to slides and cheat. Let's see what we need to put there. So again, we created all of those things. Um, one thing that I want to mention is you'll see that um, there will be a parallel between the auto-generated structure uh, and the sim object itself in terms of inheritance. So for example, if hello sim object is a sim object, the parameters of hello sim object, the structure that is auto-generated for describing the parameters of hello sim object, are also sim object parameters. So if hello sim object inherits from sim object, hello sim object params inherits from sim object params. Any question about this? OK, um, let's not go back. OK, so let's go ahead and copy and paste from this slide into our header file. And I want this here. And I want to close this, close this, close this. Save, so feel free to do it without me. You should be able to just copy and paste off of the slide, like I did right now. OK. OK. A few things to notice, and I think we're going to wrap it up here for lunch. No? OK. Great. <laughs> OK. 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 So. And I, OK, so the first two lines are include guards. The convention in Gem5 is that the name of the include guard should match the path to your header file. So include guards are there to prevent double inclusion or cyclic inclusion. So like, if you have two header files including each other, this prevents from this cycle going on and on forever. So make sure to create, like, put this structure of like definition if defs uh, on top of the bottom of your header file, make sure to follow Gem5's convention. Again, you're not required to, but again, Gem5 convention is that this is how the include guard should look like. And if you want to push your code to the upstream at some point, you will be asked to follow this convention. So 
then like, I think start following the convention from the beginning. And then there are two include statements. Uh, we talked about that auto-generated header file. It's going to be, when, when we compile Gem5, we can include it from params slash hello object.hh. So if you search anywhere in the directory right now, there wouldn't be anything, any file with that name. But when you compile Gem5, one of the steps before it gets to compiling some objects is like, creating those uh, structures and then compiling them. So at compile time, they're going to be available. Again, future looking, trust me for now. We'll see it later. And then again, I, I mentioned uh, we're inheriting hello some object in Python from some object. So there should be another parallel between the some object in C and Python. So the class that we're going to use to represent some object should also inherit from some object in C. Does that make sense? Are we good so far? Great. OK, so and then that's why we're putting uh, public some object in front of the name of the class, hello some object. And also, I mentioned that it should be uh, in the namespace gem5. So that's why also we're defining it there. Last important thing here is that every some object that you want to instantiate should have a constructor like that. So a constructor with, uh, is a specific function for every class that has the same name as the name of the class. Um, for some objects, you want to define this const constructor. Otherwise, Gem5 wouldn't be able to create a sim object for you. And the, the prototype of that function is const, the structure that represents the parameters of that, and that's it. So it should be a reference to, uh, a const reference to the parameter class. And then uh, the next step is simply going ahead and creating the source file for this. So again, Gem5 uses suffixes cc and hh. So cc is for source, hh is for, for header. So there, so let's go to the slides. OK. OK, let's copy and paste, again, off the slide into our some object. So that is slide 24. If you want to copy, you have to copy the content of slide 24 into hello some object.cc. So which is? OK. So this is, let's take a deeper look at this. So we're doing a bunch of includes here, uh, well, two. Uh, again, gem 5 convention is in the source file for a sim object. You include its header file first. Then you include anything from C++ that you want to do, and then other header files from other places in gem 5 So that's the convention, the header file for the sim object first, then C++, then gem 5 Every include should also, again, Gem5's convention is that you put the include statements in alphabetical order. Um, then we're defining a hello some object constructor here. It's inside name, namespace Gem5, giving that definition. And since we're, we're inheriting from some object, we're going to uh, instant, like, initialize a some object. Again, since hello some object params, inherits from some object params, and some object has a constructor that takes some object params as, uh, as an input, we can pass params to some object and initialize the some object. And then what we're going to do is see out hello from some object's constructor, and that's it. So for that, we need to include iostream, because that's where see out is defined. So I want to caution you to never use see out in your simulation. So because first of all, it's going to hurt your simulation performance, like you're going to have to be printing a lot. Use dprintfs if you want to print something, and then like you're only going to sacrifice your performance, uh, simulation performance when you actually need to see them, something. So C out strongly discouraged. We'll use C out for the purposes of the tutorial, but don't use it. And this is it. So 
there's one last step before we can compile Gem5, and we can go get lunch. OK. So last step before we can get to building is telling scons that, oh, this is another sim object for you to compile. Um, we talked about scons having its own domain-specific language for finding things. One thing that it does is that it like, searches the whole Gem5 source directory for, for files called sconscript. And then in sconscript, we're going to define uh, a sim object and tell scons, oh, this is a sim object that you need to compile. Scons knows how to compile sim objects. One of the steps is going ahead and creating a parameter structure for them. So let's go ahead and copy and paste all of this code in slide 26 into a file that we're going to name sconscript. So I have it opened up here. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste the content of this code block right here, the one that starts with import parentheses star um, into this. And I'm going to save it as sconscript in the same directory as my sim object file. And SNC have to be capital case. Sconscript. Yes, I believe that is a correct spelling. OK, and so what we're doing in this um, is that I, I cannot explain what import star is, like, but you're kind of telling scons to, well, I want to have access to all of your features. You're defining a sim object that will be under hello sim object. So when you want to import it in your, con in your configuration script, it will be under m5.objects.hello sim object. So the first parameter, hello sim object.py, is the name of the module in the m5 objects. But it should be the path to your sim object declaration file. So it's the name of your sim object declaration file. And then you, you can have multiple sim objects defined in the same uh, some object declaration, so you have to list them out what they are in the some objects per, per, uh, input here. So it's a list of some object names. And then you also want to register that I want this source file to be compiled. So hello some object.cc. So that's all you have to do. And if you do it and go try to compile it, Yes. OK, I'm going to maximize my terminal for you all to see and clear. So the cursor is all the way up. So scons build, uh, build null minus j. Let's use all eight this time. So. So you can see that since we have compiled Gem5 before, what's going to happen is you see like hello some object. Oh, that was too fast. Is being added to the Gem5 um, binary. If you wait a few minutes. It'll compile, and we'll take a look at that auto-generated file, and we'll go for lunch. OK. okay. Uh, so the file should already be there, uh, since we're past that step where the auto-generated files are created. So now, if you go to the build directory of your gem5, that auto-generated file will be here. So under build slash null, there should be params. And if we search for hello sim object, uh, by the way, there's another sim object called hello object from the old Gem5 tutorials. Um, don't click on that. The hello sim object is what we want to look at. You can see that there's a struct defined here called hello sim object params that inherits from sim object params. And it happens to match the name and the path. So see how the inclusion path is correct and the red squiggly lines are gone? Uh, 
and also like the name of this struct is the same name as that. So now you can trust that your parameters are created and we've reached the linking stage. So hopefully everything has gone well.